So I actually came out when I was 18, my senior year in high school. It was actually two months before graduation. But I'll give you a little bit of a backstory. My mom's also conservative. My dad's extremely liberal. And my sister is also very conservative. So I had to deal with a few bumps in the road when I came out. And I'll give you a little background. I, um, I didn't live with my mom until I was seven. I lived in the Dominican Republic until I was seven. And then I got reunited with my mother. And um, we moved to New York for a few years and then moved to Miami. Um, during that time, uh, and when I got reunited with my mother, I really felt like I owed her a... Uh, I, I felt like I owed her something and that I wanted to prove to her that I was worth having in her life. So I tried to do the... I was trying to appease her in many ways and um, to a fault. And... Um, I ended up just trying to be the best child that I could be. You know, I had my own little issues here and there, but for the most part, I was trying to be the best kid that I could be. I pretty much knew that I was gay, or confirmed it already, finally, when I was 12. Um, but being that I grew up in a conservative environment with my mother, um, and she made it very clear that homosexuality was a sin, and that it was disgusting, and that it was just the worst thing you could ever be. Um, and I think that was brought on a lot, especially at a young age, even when I didn't even comprehend what gay was, because I felt like they, my family had, I, I know they, now they told me, and they did, they did tell me that they did have an idea that I was gay. Um, and uh, my mom used to beat the crap out of me when I used to scream like a girl or something, because that was gay, you know? And um, please don't hate my mother, because it, it does have a happy ending, but it's a little rough at the beginning. Um, but at 12, 13, I started realizing that I was having sexual fantasies with about guys. Not at, I don't think I ever even thought about a woman at all. Actually, I never thought about a girl in that way. And, um, you know, I was having these sexual fantasies, and I started praying to God every night. I would, I would literally cry at least once a week, like, please don't let me be gay. You know, like, why? You know, like... I, I feel like maybe, you know, hopefully this is a test from God or whatnot. I mean, I had to go through that for like about five years of my life until finally I came to terms with it. Um, and the way that I came to terms with it, a lot of it had to do with my mother being so ungrateful at the time. She um, She's never happy or uh, content with what I did. Uh, if I would be go home with five A's and a B, she would question, why did you get a B? You know, if she was like, well, you know, you're always all about school and you're taking all these honors classes, you know, why don't you join clubs, you know, or, or do after school activities? I would join them and then she'd be like, why are you doing so many activities? What you should really be doing is sports. So then I joined water polo and swimming and then she'd be like, why, you know, you're never home anymore. You're involved in so many things. So this happened, well, that, that, that was the final straw when I was like, okay, this lady is just not ever going to be happy with anything that I do. So my senior year of high school, I kind of gave up on trying to appease her. And I also felt like she just was anything that I would do, she would always find a fault to it. So I just said, you know what, I'm going to live for myself. So back in 98, AOL was like the big thing, America Online. And I went to a gay chat room and I started talking to like like-minded people and I decided to meet a guy, you know, and I met him at a mall and honestly, I'll, I'm going to be straight up, I literally wanted to have a sexual encounter because I just, you know, I was a virgin until I was 18 and I just was ready to explore that part of me. You know what? And I did have a sexual encounter with this individual, and I loved it. You know, I really did. I was like, okay, I am really gay. You know, this is it. I am totally gay now. Um, and I was actually excited. I, I, the, all the crying and all the fear, you know, all those five, six years of crying and, you know, and praying to God after doing that, what I did, that sexual encounter, it was all erased because... I found out this is who I am, and if God hates it, then guess what? Let me go to hell. And I was so excited, I actually ended up coming out to my best friend, um, a girl, two months prior for me, uh, two months prior for me graduating college. I mean, high school. And after, um, and I ended up meeting my first boyfriend right after I graduated from high school, which we did it for about three or four months. 
Now, this is where things get a little crazy because um, my best friend was totally cool with it. And my boyfriend was about, I was 18 and he was like 27, 28. And he would come and pick me up at the house every now and then. And my mom started getting suspicious because she was like, who is this guy? You know, this guy is older than you. Why are you hanging out with him? Now, being the overachiever that I am, I actually was taking summer college classes to get further. You know, I, w I was in a full scholarship. I got a full scholarship to school, uh, academic scholarship. And um, I ended up, you know, going to school in the summer. And I was like, well, mom, you know, this guy, he's, uh, you know, he goes to college with me. And she's like, yeah, but he looks older. And I'm like, mom, college, you could be 40, 50. You know, there's all sorts of ages that people go to college. So she's like, yeah, that's true. But he looks a little gay, she said. And I was like, and what's wrong with that? She goes, mm, you know how I feel about that, you know, make sure that he doesn't try to do anything to you or convert you to be gay or something like that. And I was like, oh, I'm in for a world here of craziness. So she was being very suspicious. She was just being very, very suspicious. And one night we had gone out and um, I wanted him to stay the night, you know, and we had a guest bedroom, a guest bedroom. And he was like, well, I'll stay, but I'll stay in the guest bedroom because your mom doesn't seem to like me. And I don't think it's a good idea that I stay in the same room as you. And I was like, no, 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 stay in my room. Don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. <laughs> well, it was a big deal because the next morning I woke, I woke up and my mom was livid. She's like, what is he doing here? You know, I was like, he, you know, had a little bit too much to drink and he stayed the night. He goes, but we have a guest bedroom. Why didn't he stay there? And I was like, Mom, because you made this. Uh, this is, I was a little sarcastic when I was younger. I'm like, Mom, you know, it's because you made you did such a good job of organizing the bed that I didn't want to ruin it, you know, and I didn't want you to be upset, you know, the next morning. She goes, I would have much preferred that you ruined the bed, you know, than you having him sleep in your room, you know. God knows what he would have tried on you. Ever since that day, my mom started getting suspicious, and I had closed off. I used to tell my mom everything. And I closed off. I just really, I didn't want to tell her anything anymore because I just felt like she wasn't ever going to be 100% happy or, you know, excited about things that I did. So she started being very suspicious. And since I wasn't telling her anything, she called my dad. My mom and my dad um, were not together. Um, and um, my dad lives in the Dominican, Dominican Republic, and that's where I'm from. And she, he called. She was like, listen, I don't know what your son's up to, but... I think he's up to no good, and we need to figure out what's going on, and I honestly don't know what to do. Do you mind, would you Would you want to hire a det uh, private detective to really figure out what's going on with my son, because I have no idea, and I'm worried. I didn't know this was going on. My dad agreed to it, and they hired a private detective, a detective to follow me around for a few weeks. And um, obviously... The guy, I had broken up with my boyfriend at the time, but the guy found out I was going to gay clubs. And at the time, I was talking to some guy, so they had pictures of me making out with him. And it was just craziness. Like, you know, they, they had all the proof there, and they told my mom, listen, you know, your son's gay. You know, this is all the proof. And that's pretty much what he's doing. He's just, you know, going out, drinking, and he's gay. You know, and my mom was devastated because homosexuality it, to her is like, at the time, was the dirtiest thing you could ever do. And um, she had an intervention. She actually had a call. She called my sister, who is also conservative, my, my brother-in-law, my stepfather was there, my uncle, my aunt. They were all there. And I remember vividly that morning, I had to go to work because I also had a part-time job. And I was getting ready for work, and I go outside to the living room, and my mother's there with everybody, you know. And I'm like, what's going on, you know? And my mom is crying hysterical, you know. She's hysterically crying, and my sister's like, listen, we need to talk. And I'm like, what's going on? She goes, well, we um, found out that you're hanging out with gay people, and what, we need to find out why is that and I'm like well what's wrong with hanging out with gay people I mean they're people too you know she goes yeah but 
you know, that that can rub off and that, you know, it's just ignorant comments she was telling me, you know, that could rub off and, you know, if you hang out with them long enough, you could become one of them. And I'm like, how could you become one of them? You can't just become one of them. You either are or you aren't. She goes, well, look at this. And she threw pictures at me and there were pictures of me making out with the guy that I made out with and hanging out with these people. And I'm like, okay, so I, I didn't care anymore. I really didn't care anymore, you know. I was like... So, yeah, these are the pictures. You're looking at what, I do, at what I'm doing. What are your thoughts on it? I was being sarcastic. They're like, well, I mean, that's not a thing that straight people do, Louis, you know. And I was like, well, then obviously that answers your question. I'm gay. My mom just started crying even more. She couldn't even breathe, pretty much. They had to, like, calm her down. Um, and my sister like, how could you do that? You know, you know, these people are making you do this. You need to you know, search God within you and all this. And I was like, listen, I've been searching God within me for the past six years and he's not answered my prayers. So obviously, if he does exist, then he is okay with me being gay and it's you guys imposing that this is a wrong thing to do. So I am tired. I have shed many tears. I, I, I just, I didn't even, I had shed many tears already trying to fix myself. And it hasn't been fixed, so obviously if God does exist, then you know what? He's okay with me being gay, because there's no way in hell that he's going to make me suffer for six years, you know, for, for this, you know, for me to, like, just continue fighting me, so that I can get married with a man, uh, with a woman, have kids, and then be miserable the rest of my life. It's not happening. I told her just like that. So, I went to my room, pissed as hell, and started getting ready, and I heard the door close behind me. My mom, or my stepfather, had actually inverted the locks. They locked me in the room. And on top of that, I had my own personal phone line. And when I went to call, the line was dead because they had jammed something into the, you know, into the, into the phone line. So I couldn't make a phone call, and I was locked into my room. You know, and my sister had left and all that. And I had to go to work. So I was like, listen, I need to go to work. You know, I need to go to work. I cannot just not show up. I was a very responsible individual. And I still am. And they weren't letting me go out. So I started kicking down the door because I... I was so mad that I was being locked in. I was being locked into my own room for being gay. Like it was just ridiculous. So my stepfather ended up opening the door, and I said a few hateful words, you know, to my mother and everybody. And I ran. And I pretty much ran away for about three weeks. I ended up um, living with my a friend of mine um, who was already out, and his parents were completely cool with him being gay. And I called my dad from from their place and I told him the whole situation and my dad told me listen son I love you no matter what you know but you need to go back to your mother's house because she's worried sick about you I'm gonna take the flight the first flight over there and I'm gonna let's talk this out so I went back to my mom's house the following day my dad was there and um, he told me listen I love you and if this is who you think you are then you know what I am a hundred percent on board with you you know he personally thought it was a phase but you know, he's like, but if it's not a phase, I still love you no matter what, you know. But I'm like, Dad, I cannot live with my mom. Like, there's no way that I can live here, you know, in jail, pretty much. You know, I lo ended up losing my job. I had lost two weeks of school because, you know, it was my fall semester, my first semester, my first actual fall semester in college. I ended up missing two weeks of school already, you know, and I was on a scholarship, so, you know, I was just like, this is ridiculous, you know, I don't even have a car, I can't drive to school, I can't do anything, so he was like, I'll talk to your mom, well, just stay here for a semester, and I'll make sure that you get a dorm, um, considering that I had a full scholarship, my dad ended up saying, I'll pay for a dorm, because you're saving me money on the tuition, but just stay here for at least the two months that you have to stay. I only lasted there two weeks. She was very, very, uh, the, the words that would come out of her mouth were just so hateful. Um, the big one that I remember was having soup. And I was so, like, I lost a lot of weight during that time. I ended up, like, not even finishing the whole bowl of soup. And I'm like, Mom, I don't want any more. And then she was like, oh, I'll finish it. And she went to put it in her mouth. And then she threw the spoon on the floor. And said, oh my God, what am I doing? And I'm like, what are you doing? What's wrong? And she's like, I can't be drinking this, eating this soup. You know, God knows what the fuck you have. You're a fucking faggot. 
And I said to myself, I cannot have this. I can't have this sort of treatment. You know, I can't deal with this. There's no way that I'm going to put up with this negative energy, you know. So I called my dad. I was like, Dad, I can't. This is what happened. This is just, I can't do this anymore, you know. And school's fault. You know, I'm doing horrible in school. I'm not focused. You know, things have to go, you know, I don't know what to do. So he's like, listen, come to the Dominican Republic. Um, drop your classes, which by the time that I was going on, I couldn't drop my glasses. So I ended up failing everything. Um, and just come to, just come live with me in the Dominican Republic for two months. And just kind of like air everything out. Like just, you know, you'll be in the islands and you'll just try to just think things through and, and then start fresh in the, in the spring semester. So I ended up doing that, and, um, you know, my dad was very supportive. We, we actually bonded. It actually brought us closer, um, and he was very, he's very supportive of my sexuality. He, um, my mom was telling him things that I was going crazy and that all this other stuff was going on, and, and he's like, wow, you're not really going crazy. Your mom thought that you needed a psychologist because you were, like, talking, and, you know, talking to yourself and doing all these sorts of crazy things. And I'm like, Dad, my mom is... My mom is crazy, you know, so he's like, no, I'm beginning to understand. You're perfectly fine, you know, and, you know, come spring, you're going to have a dorm. And I did. Now, you guys are probably wondering about my aunts and my other uncles and all that. They were all pretty cool with it, but the big issue was that my mom made it very clear to my family members that they were not to support my sexuality and that they were not supposed to take, they were not to take me into their home. Um, most of them heeded her words. A few, like, broke the rules. They're like, look you're my nephew and I'm not going to just let you be out in the streets because your mom doesn't like the fact that you're gay. Most of them are, were, you know, a lot of them, I would say about 80% of them were cool with me being gay. And a lot of them even thought that I was gay from the beginning since I was a kid. They had no issues with it. But my mom was very strong in her words. And, you know, she felt that anybody that took me into the house that was a family member was pretty much, you know supporting something that was horrible and they were pretty much dead to her so she didn't talk to i think one of my aunts for a few years you know because she took me in short for, for a short while um but yeah that was my coming out story um and i ended up losing my scholarship i ended up having anxiety problems and a whole bunch of stuff because i was such a mama's boy and i really wanted to prove to my mom that i was the best that i could be and i couldn't i didn't talk to my mom for six years um it wasn't until i was living in new york for a short while that she needed my help uh, to sell a house and you know i did i went back to miami and i helped her sell the house and um this is the thing um you have to understand where people are coming from. My mom was not educated. My mom was grew up in the country, and my mom has very limited education and doesn't really understand. Didn't understand back then the whole concept of homosexuality, and she only knew one way, you know. And um, I understood that, and I don't hold resentment towards her. Um, she did what she thought was the best thing at the time because she loved me and she didn't want me going to hell. I totally understand all that. She mistreated me, and it really forced me to grow up at a very young age um, and I am thankful that I had to go through all of that because it's made me a much stronger person and I am more grounded and I will never ever let anybody put me down because I already went through all that and it's the person that I have to deal with on a daily basis is me so I have to make sure that I'm happy. So I don't care what other people's opinions are about me. I will take them into I will take them into consideration, but if it doesn't make me happy, it's out the door. You know, and one of the things that I think to a fault with me was that I my I never really I respected my mom enough to just stay away from her and I never immersed her in my lifestyle and I think had I immersed her more into my lifestyle, like for like invited my friends over, even though she didn't want to see any gay people, I think it would have been a, an easier road. Because now that I am older, and that we're past that huge hump, um, her and I have a, a pretty good relationship. She's met my best friend, um, person that helped sell her house was actually a gay person, um, and she's met my gay friends, and she's actually told me, "Wow, you know, like." 
I thought I had you guys totally pegged wrong, you know, I thought that you guys were all drug addicts and that you guys were all drag queens and you guys were all, you know, super flamboyant and you know what, I mean, yes, that is a part of our gay lifestyle and there's nothing wrong with being flamboyant or being a drag queen at all, I actually enjoy them, um, but, you know, it's not just this cookie cutter gay persona that's out there, you know, and that's one of the things my mom did not understand. And now she, um, she actually bought my best friend a, a Christmas present, a Johnny Hot Tamale. And, um, she even uh, makes food and she'll make more, some for my friends, you know. And so she's come a long way, you know. And that's, the, like, the happy ending where, um, and all I had to do was really just expose her. Exp force my gayness on her to, uh, you know, and not, you know... And not, like, feel sorry that I'm gay, you know, in front of her. Like, no, this is who I am, and this is what you have to deal with. Granted, she does throw it in every now and then that I need to look into God and that I need to have him show me the light because she's not, like, she respects that I'm gay, but she does not accept it. And I'm okay with that. You know, as long as she respects it, and as long as she's respectful to me and my friends, I'm okay with it. But that's my coming out story, and... Let me tell you, for those of you that are going through a similar situation or are coming out and you're in your teens, you know your parents well, more in, uh, uh, well enough to know whether they'd be accepting or not of you. If you really are really con con convinced that they will pretty much kick you out of the house, my best advice is to wait. Don't lie to yourself. You know who you are. Don't, you know, there's a lot of support groups out there that you can speak with, that you can talk to. You know, don't feel that you need to become somebody else just to appease family members or friends. You know, you don't want to be that person that gets married, you know, with children and ends up, you know, 20 years later realizing that this has been all a lie and that you've been trying to, like, just make everybody else around you happy while you're miserable. That's not the way it should be. You need to, you come first. You know, and you need to find like-minded individuals that accept you for who you are and who love you. Because they're, they are out there. You know what I mean? You don't have to do this alone. And that's who you need to be around with. You know what I mean? If your parents or your sister or your brother hate the fact that you're gay, they can go to hell. Because you know what? This is who you are. And if they're rejecting the fact that you're gay, then they're rejecting who you are as an individual. You know? And over time, if they really love you... They'll come to terms with it, and they'll learn to, to, to deal with it. Because my mom did, and I didn't honestly think that she would. And my sister also, it, we don't talk about it. We just don't, you know? And it's such a better, it, it's such a better life now. It does get better, like they say. Um, you know, my mom and I have a very beautiful friendship, relationship now, um, where our boundaries, we don't talk about religion and we do not talk about gay my sexuality that's un we don't talk about it because it leads to arguments and we just respect each other enough that we have a difference of opinion and that's all it is so that's my coming out story i'm sorry that it was lengthy i hope that you guys can um you know see some light in it but you know right now i am very comfortable with myself and i try to enjoy life as much as possible i just i am who i am and i am happy about it and i love it so that's that bye